I found a pug And if you're mean to it, I'll fuck you up Lottie da pug He's got a mashed up face and he's the size of a mug A pug Welcome back to another episode of Pugs and Mugs Sipping Stories with Cup of Pug we are back after a long hiatus whilst we set up Manchester, which is now open. But today we have a very special podcast. Normally people come to the cafe and think that hugging the dogs is absolutely pure joy and heaven. And some even go as far as saying it is therapy. But that is actually a thing. You can have a therapy dog. We are here today with Rodney, the therapy dog. And he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> and he's gone. Come sit. Come over there. Come sit down. Um, so let's start. So what is a therapy dog? So a therapy dog um, is a dog that is, has a good nature, um, friendly and can go to various places. Um, it could be schools, hospitals, care homes, um, basically to support patients, young people, um, provide them with kind of smiles, caring, put, um, a kind of a friendly face, um, but basically make them feel better in all sorts of settings. Um, it can be from just kind of either from looking at them, stroking at them. Um, sometimes Rodney gets kind of up on hospital beds um, or range of things. But just that interaction with an animal sometimes helps people relax um, and just feel happier overall. Definitely. Do you find that actually you maybe take it for granted because you, know, you have a dog that you can sit down at night with and, 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 and stroke? And... Yeah, definitely. Um, like Rodney's there all the time, so just having a little chat with a dog, stroking to a dog, um, even just going out for a walk with a dog kind of makes you feel better. Getting outside gives you a reason to go out. Um, so yeah, definitely lucky to have Rodney every day. Definitely. So what makes Rodney a therapy dog? Why him? So Rodney is a puggle, which is so part pug, part beagle. Um, so friendly in nature, however also greedy as the beagle. <laughs> um, <laughs> which means... He's easy to train because he'll do anything for a treat. Um, but Rodney is in the kind of... He's not too hyper because yeah. um, Rodney's about just coming up to four years old. So he's got over that kind of puppy stage. Uh, but equally, he's not a nervous dog. So in, the therapy dogs generally need to be like in between um, that type of behaviour. Happy for people to like, touch him, stroke him, pet him. Um, the good thing about Rodney as well is that actually he doesn't bark. Um, <laughs> yes, so um, you couldn't do it, Bruce. <laughs> so it's, it's not that's not a requirement to be a therapy dog, but it helps because if you go and see, um, say, children hospital and a dog starts barking kind of at them, they'll get scared. Uh, but no, Rodney doesn't really bark unless his toy is stuck and he wants to tell you that it's stuck. <laughs> that is pretty much it. Um, so yeah, it's just about having the right temperament, really. Definitely. So. I mean, what does a therapy dog actually do? What, what are the benefits? So Rodney, he uh, goes to visit a care home and we visit the local hospital. So when we go to the hospital, we go to a mixture of wards. Um, we go to the children's ward. Uh, it's worth mentioning that it's both for patients and for staff as well. So sometimes we almost go, we might have some of the time going behind the scenes, so uh, to the labs. Obviously, we're actually working in a hospital, it's quite a stressful environment, busy. Um, so the staff really enjoy um, just having some time stroking Rodney, taking photos of Rodney, um, interacting with Rodney. But yeah, and then with the patients, it could be children that gives them an opportunity to interact with something different if they've been in the hospital for a while. Um, they can, like, kind of might get out of bed, they might smile more, just small things. And then if we see with some of the adult patients, again, they might have a dog at home that they haven't seen for weeks, months, that might miss their own dog and just enjoy that kind of interaction um, with an animal. That's really interesting, actually, because when people come to the cafe, even if they're on holiday, they'll come because they miss their dog. <laughs> but you don't think about when you're in hospital for like, you know, two or three weeks, your dog's not going to be there. Yeah. You, you miss that, again, that interaction of just being able to stroke a dog and, and cuddle a dog. Yeah, so. and unfortunately it's quite difficult to, you can't uh, bring your own dog in um, to the hospital for them to visit. They have to be, like I say, well, I see, <laughs> Rodney's actually got his own pass to visit the hospital. Wow. So he is uh, authorised to go in, but no, you can't bring any kind of dog into the hospital. Uh, care homes are a bit different with the one that we visit 
Um, some people do have like family dogs that will come and visit, but obviously mm -hmm. Rodney's their regular visitor. Um, yeah, to come visit, and it does make a difference, especially like I say, you've got adults that might have dogs at home, but also generally quite often children have got a pet at home that they miss as well. So it gives them an opportunity to like see a pet, and not be might not be their pet, but. Yeah, helps. Definitely, definitely. I mean, I, I, yeah, even when I go away and I, I'm not with the dogs, I'm like, oh, I want, I want the dog. <laughs> and I'm the person that will go and find a dog to, to hug. So, you know, the fact that you can offer that service in the hospital, especially in a children's hospital as well. Yeah. Um, so how, you, you said that some of the staff obviously get the benefit of it as well, right? Yeah, so I think with the staff, it's almost like... <laughs> what what did we say, Rodney? You don't bark. bark. You just want attention. Come sit. <laughs> so with the staff... Um, it's almost like a bit like a tea break or it just breaks up the day. Um, they will always say, oh, my God, it's just made my day a little bit better because they can switch off at like generally like five, ten minutes, half an hour um, just to, like, like I say, interact with Rodney, stroke him, talk to him. Um, yeah, just that little bit of let's kind of switch off from the day job of five, ten minutes. Yeah, it's amazing how much they actually all love like the majority of Rodney and again some of them might not actually like dogs but like whilst being there they will generally build up the courage even if it's just to stroke Rodney Definitely. Um, yeah and I think it's just like a little light relief uh, from the day job <laughs> you're having a moment aren't you Rodney you're having a moment <laughs> and, and obviously I think we always think about therapy <laughs> what do you need why are you bugging we often talk about therapy from like a mental health perspective and how it can help people. Obviously with the dog, there's that physicality side of it as well. Has that ever helped? Yeah, so like I say, we've talked about kind of stroking Rodney, bits like that, but also it helps patients. So for example, if a patient's had a stroke um, and they've got limited movement, sometimes the, the physios like to use Rodney um, to encourage a patient to move that bit more. Um, so it might be moving them to get out of bed, but it might even be just a simple movement of like moving an arm over um, to stroke Rodney, which really they might not have seen that movement. Um, and some of the maybe the younger like patients that haven't been out of bed um, like maybe for days, we, um, Rodney has actually kind of helped patients that like say might not have got up for days. The dog come in and say, "Would you like to kind of get out of bed and stroke Rodney?" And they kind of just do. <laughs> Sometimes the nurses and the parents are shocked by that they've just got up, um, like because there's a dog there. But it's just that encouragement. And the patient isn't, doesn't really think about it. What do you think Rodney gets out of it? Well, Rodney knows when he goes on his visits that he gets lots of treats. That's always going to help the dog, isn't it? <laughs> um, generally, it's me that will provide him with treats when we go on our visits. Um, but also, he just loves the attention, having the strokes, uh, interacting with people. It makes him more of a, like a sociable dog. Um, he's really easygoing, so we can go out to most places, interact with kind of any type of dog. And um, he does that like, really well. So he just enjoys meeting people. He'll recognise like people's the voices of people, like the nurses. Uh, give them kind of bigger wags. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So he actually, like I say, and gets rewarded throughout the visit. He gets excited when he gets somewhere. Um, so talk to, us, talk to us about uh, pets at therapy. What is pets at therapy? Yeah. So pets at therapy is um, a charity. Uh, which they support you with the kind of training and assessing for your dog to become a therapy dog. So they also coordinate volunteers like um, nationally. So if you uh, would like a therapy dog in your like establishment, um, you can get in touch with Pets at Therapy and they'll put you in touch with the local coordinator because in each area there's a local coordinator that will manage kind of who's the volunteers in that area, what's available. Um, and they reach out to us to say, for example, we've got these places interested who can uh, kind of give up their time. And so what kind of places do they, would they cater for? So the most kind of common is, as I said, hospitals, care homes, but also schools. Um, one of the popular um, activities that a therapy dog does is that they go, go into schools and children can actually read with um, a therapy dog. Um, so it's a bit of a longer session, but they can kind of participate in class reading. Um, so that's what they do. But there's also, like all other kind of establishments, um, not necessarily care home, it could be kind of maybe uh, mental health homes, things like that. Um, that, yeah, if, any, if you're interested, 
um, like I say, you can reach out and they'll arrange visits. I know they also go to universities, um, like on open days and various um, bits, so I don't think there's anything that's necessarily out of the question. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's probably the max, and you wouldn't really do one, uh, more than one visit a day. For sure, for sure. So if people wanted to get in touch with Pets at Therapy, what can they do? Um, so if you take a look at Pets at Therapy website, um, so they, like I say, there's two ways, so you might be interested in a dog visiting kind of where you work, um, you can reach out and they'll put you in touch with the local coordinator in that area. Or if you're interested in making kind of your own dog into a therapy dog, um, then you can go through that route as well. So what you do is you kind of get in touch with them and then your dog will need to be assessed through the assessors. Again, they have um, local assessors in each area. Um, so they'll kind of put you through the details. You can go through the application um, and then your dog will be assessed um, through the various route. And there's all information about what happens kind of during the assessment. As I said at the start, it's about really um, assessing the dog's temperament um, so that he can kind of, they're comfortable um, that your dog can be a therapy dog. Um, yeah, so that's what I suggest. Reach out, have a look at the website. Um, yeah, and see if you're interested. He's got a mashed up face. He's the size of a mug, a pug.